Let me welcome you to the story of Genesis, Beginning Path to Paradise, Session 2, Chapter 1, The Mystery of New Beginnings, The Mystery of Creation. There is a monumental motif, a tremendous theme that runs throughout the pages of history. It is there in the beginning of heaven and earth. The Spirit of God moved over a watery mass of an abyss. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. The luminous illumination of God began to shine, to bring order out of that which was without form, substance out of that which was empty, and light out of that which was darkness. It was the beginning of the mystery of creation. The essence of this mystery, the story behind the story, is how that which is lifeless and in darkness experiences the life and light of the living, eternal God. If the story behind the story is not seen, is not understood, then the comprehension of any new beginning will always be shallow and superficial in the quest for paradise. Perhaps the greatest challenge in life of everyone is not the new beginnings they experience, but understanding why these new beginnings are necessary. The theme is not only there in the beginning, it is also there in the end, when the revelation of Jesus Christ brings man to his glorious consummation. After witnessing in a vision the dreadful woes that must come to the physical realm before Christ can come in his glory, John heard Jesus say, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The consummation of life for creation is experienced as Christ comes forth in his glory, out of the woes of that which is not glorious. From the beginning to the end, there seems to be a distinctive design by which the immortal God manifest his presence in a mortal world. It is how the physical creation experiences the spiritual creator. This tremendous theme is indeed how God makes the nearness of his presence real to a created world in new beginnings. After John recorded the words of Jesus, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. John stated, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. God's righteousness, produced by following the way God has ordained, as opposed to our acts of righteousness for God, allows man to enter the city of God, where the life that never dies abides. God's prescription, the motif of the mystery of life, the theme that runs from beginning to end, enables man to have the right to eat of the tree of life. As we will see, in the story of man being driven from the Garden of Eden, where he was intended to dwell, the author of Genesis stated that God placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. In both the beginning and the ending of the story of man, the way of the tree of life stands as a beacon of how man is to experience God as a created being. 
The mystery of the way of the tree of life is the way man experiences life and the renewal of that life in a weak, decaying, dying, physical world of our existence. This pattern of good coming out of that which is less than good, form coming out of that which is without form, substance coming out of that which is void, light coming out of that which is darkness. The mystery of the way is the key essential of the tree of life in both Genesis and Revelation, in both the beginning and the ending. It reflects the mystery of life that is seen in all of creation. For example, the fruit of the fruit tree is the final good that comes out of a tree that once was barren. The bloom of the flower comes out of the planted seed that has fallen to the ground and died. The springtime, with all of its glory of new life, comes out of a winter that has withered and revealed little or no signs of life. Man's own breathing is perhaps the most basic example of the mystery of new beginnings. Exhaling and inhaling is essential for man to live. When God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul, his breathing became his own personal testimony and experience of the way of the tree of life. You cannot inhale unless you exhale. The mystery of the way is proclaimed by Jesus in his first recorded words. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Experiencing the realized kingdom of God, experiencing paradise now, can occur for every man in every generation. Man's thinking can be changed, and he can come to believe in the gospel. New restoring life of the kingdom of God, new beginnings, can come out of the old perishing thoughts of man's world. If you can repent, have your thinking changed, and believe the gospel, the good news that life always comes out of death, you can experience the same profound truth of the criminal dying on the cross. In the midst of excruciating pain, God can speak, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Jesus said to Peter, after he told him he would fail, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places, literal meaning of mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, through his death and resurrection. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again through the Holy Spirit, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. In the midst of trouble on every side, perplexities abounding everywhere, pressure continually building, put-downs in every interaction, God has the power and the desire to remove all distress, despair, every sense of being forsaken, and every sense of being destroyed. Jesus can and will speak the words, Come unto me, come up where I am. I have prepared a special place for you. You can experience a heightened spiritual awareness that can lift you up above the shadows and plant your feet on higher ground. Paradise is for you.